Hello, welcome to Timely Word and Prayer. This is the seventh and last day of the 37th week. This is day 259. Day 259, September 15 in a leap year and um, September 16th in a clear year. Thank you, Father, for bringing us to this last day of the 37th week. Thank you, Father, because you have not, you have not given up. You have not given us to the wicked. You have not allowed the wicked to rejoice over our head. Thank you, Father, that you have brought us to this day of resource. We give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The seventh is the end point. The seventh is the day of resource. This is when the result, the results of the efforts of the, you know, within the week, the efforts of the 37th week, this is when the result comes. In Joshua chapter 6, God commanded Israel to march around Jericho six days, seven days, and the seventh day march around it seven times, and the war would give way. They did. The result did not come in the first day. The result did not come in the second day. The result did not come in the, in the third or fourth or fifth or sixth. The result did not come until the seventh day because the seventh day is the season of results. The season of results. And we can hold on to God in the seventh season and say, Lord, we want results. This is a season of results. The season of results. You know, all this we'll find in the uh, second day of creation narrative. If you go to Genesis chapter 2, the first three verses, God tells us what happened on the seventh seven, seven day. He said, God ended his work on the seventh day. God rested on the seventh day. God blessed the day, the seventh day, and God sanctified the seventh day. These four things. That's what God did on the seventh day. He didn't create anything new. He ended his work. And because he ended his work, it became a pattern. You will see Jesus will now enter into the temple and end people's struggles, end people, you know, end people's you know, toils. The man at the pool of Bethesda was healed on a Sabbath day. The man with a withered hand was healed on a Sabbath day. The woman with a bent back, the bent woman was healed on a Sabbath. People were not happy about that, but Jesus said, no, that's what the Sabbath is about. They were angry that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Jesus said, look, these people need rest. He came to bring people into practical rest. So when we come into the seventh day, it's a season to experience rest. Experience a season to experience God's result, to receive answers to prayers. It's a time to say it is done. It is done. It's done. The work has been done. It's a time to celebrate the finished work. So we enter into the finished work, we enter into the results by faith. So today you can begin to declare, it is done. It is done. It is done. This is the day of it is done. <laughs> the work is done. As you begin to declare that, you see the manifestation. Declare, it is done. It is done. This day, in the mighty name of Jesus, it is done. The labor of the week, it is done. Hallelujah. The travail of the week, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Because that's why God, why would God rest on the seventh? Because he said, it's done. It's a season to say, it is done. I'm entering into rest because it is done. The work is over. So you declare it and you walk. You know, you just don't declare it. As you declare it, you know, you, 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 you enter into the spirit of that declaration. If it is done, why will I still be anxious? If it is done, why will I still be afraid? If it is done, why am I still, you know, why am I still restless? If it is done, why am I still worried? If it is done, then I should be celebrating. It is done. It is done. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is done. It is done. I pray that your testimony today will be, it is done. Beginning with your confession and declaration, it is done. And then we move into it. We walk into that reality because we we'll, we'll begin by, you know, declaring, we we'll begin by confessing it, and then we move into that reality. Before Abraham had Isaac, he started answering father of multitude. <laughs> Before he had the child of promise, he began to answer father of multitude. Yeah. Father of multitude. And then he entered into it. As he began to answer father of multitude, he entered into it. Father of multitude with one child. <laughs> father of multitude with one child. But today, every part of the world, people are claiming Abraham as father. <laughs> He's our father. Christians, Abraham is our father. The Jews, Abraham is our father. Muslims, Abraham is our father. <laughs> Abraham is father. He's father to everyone. Abraham is everybody's father. But you know, here was a man who struggled to have a child. And then God gave him a big name, father of multitude, with one child or without even a child. So that means you must never set your eyes on on the things, on the way things are. You know, can you look at me now? See, nothing is happening. Look at the other one. Take your eyes away and just walk with God. Do what God says. Believe what God says concerning you. Believe it. Believe what, who God says you are. Believe what God says you have. You know, do what God says you should do. That's how to change that reality. So he began to answer Father of multitude without a child. <laughs> without a child. So that's how to move into that, that reality. So God rested. I'd like you to enter into rest. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, we who have believed have entered into rest. As we believe, we enter into rest. As you believe, once you believe the word of God, you enter into rest. Meaning it is done. Nothing else to do is done. <laughs> As you confess it is done, it will never be undone. Nothing will be, not, it not be otherwise, it cannot happen otherwise. It will be done. Wow. Okay, so we're going to look at the seventh part, the last part of the book of Agai. Let's see what the Lord has in stock for us there. Let's see what the Lord has for us in that passage. Um, Haggai chapter 2 verse 10. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet saying, thus says the Lord, now ask the priest concerning the law, saying, if one carries holy meat in, in, it, in the fold of his garment, and with the edge of edge, he touches bread or stew, wine or oil, or any food. Will it become holy? Then the priest answered and said, no. And Haggai said, if one who is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these, will it be unclean? And the priest answered, it shall be unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, so is this people. And so is this nation before me, says the Lord. And so is every work that is in their hands. And, and what they offer there is unclean. And now carefully consider from this day forward. From before the stone was laid upon the stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days when one came to a heap of 20 ephahs, there was but 10. One came to the wine vat to draw out 50 baths from the press. There were but 20. I struck you with blight and with mild you and hell in all the labors of your hands. Yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Consider now. It's now. We're looking at now, now, now. God is saying now. He tells he told them what happened before, but he said, Consider now, now, from this day, as it were, from this seventh day of results.
from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the lost temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed still in the barn? As yet the, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yet yielded fruit, but from this day I will bless you. Woo! From this day I will bless you. I mean, the people have been laboring, laboring, say, from this particular day, things have changed. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It is done. From this day, things have changed. That's what he was telling them. Because the seventh is a day of results. Say, so forget about what happened. You've suffered. You've done this. You've done that. But from this point that you have begun to do my will, from this day, I will bless you. And if your heart has been stirred to get into the world in this week of returning to abandoned projects, and you have listened to the word of God and say, I'm going back into the will of God. I'm going back to what God will have me to do. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the circumstances are. The voice of the Lord is asking me to go back. God says, from this day that you have taken this step, I will bless you. I will bless you. And again, the word of the Lord came uh, to Haggai on the 24th day of the month saying, speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake heaven and earth and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the Gentile kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them and horses, the horses and their riders shall come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, says the Lord, and will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord of hosts. That's distinction, God said, because you stepped out to obey my word. They didn't argue it. They didn't say to the prophet, how can we go to do this work when the king has not authorized it? They didn't say, how are we going to do it? You want us to become disobedient to the people? They say we should walk, stop, and then you, you are using prophecy to tell us to go, go back to the walk. They didn't argue. They just trembled before the word of the Lord and received the word. They obeyed the voice of the Lord and heeded the voice of God's messenger and got back to work. And God said, I will do two things. From this day, I will bless you. I will bless you. Just for responding to God. Amen. Just for responding to God. Once we come into the seven season is a time because it's a time to pursue the pleasure of God. It's a time to get back into alignment with the word of work of God. I mean with the word of God. Once we get back into alignment, you know, the shift begins to happen. There are things that will never happen until we return back into alignment with God. We can pray, we can fast, we can give money, we can do whatever, but there are things that will never change until we come back into alignment with God. There's nothing that God desires from us like alignment with Him. Align with my purpose, align with my counsel, align with what I want to do. Because God has all the power, he can, he can choose to come down, but he has limited himself that I won't do anything on earth without man. So once God can get people who will align with him to walk, then the power of God can be released on earth. So that's the importance of you know, getting ourselves to align with God. But when a believer does not align with God, he becomes a hindrance to the purpose of God on earth. It becomes a hindrance. So that way even the believer becomes an enemy of God. Because there's no way. God is looking for people who will align with him so that through him they can walk. Spirits must walk with men. Spirits walk with men. So Satan is looking for those who will agree with him. Those who can kill. Those who can destroy. Those who can steal. Those who can set places on fire. The devil is looking for people like that, who, that, that he can fill them with himself and just tell them to go and cause problems. Enter schools and shoot people. Just go, kidnap, abduct, do whatever. Cause havoc. 
Satan is looking for such people. But God is also looking for vessels that he can use to release his power on earth. Those who can align with his word, align with his purpose, so he can fill them with his spirit and then they will go and do his will on earth. So when God finds such people, <laughs> it's over. If God can get you to be where he wants you to be, to do what he wants you to do, and to say what he wants you to do, he said, forget it. I will bless you. From this day forward, I will bless you. Whoever has written anything against you, don't worry. I will bless you. I will bless you. And when God decrees, he will do a thing. Who is the one that can acknowledge it? God said, I will bless you. From this day that you have set your hand to do my will, I will bless you. And then he turned to Zerubbabel and said, <laughs> you are like a signet ring. He said, I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says the Lord. Not only will he bless the people, he will bless the leader. The one who is influencing the people to go in the direction. He said, I will make you to be like a signet ring. Put the ring there, because I have chosen you. I pray that this day you will begin to see the results. You will testify indeed this day that it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. That that's going to be your testimony today. You say, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that it is done. Don't even wait for the testimony to come. Begin to declare it. It is done. It is done. It is done. If a song comes into your mouth with this is done, sing it. But it is done. Enter into that reality through this confession and declaration. And I pray for you this day and this week that as we end this week, end this week, we end it with this testimony that it is done. We end it with testimony that the results have come in and the results are in our favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name.